I would say that I wanted to be a fashion designer and my grandmother, who was vain in all the most um, attractive ways, actually, um, would tell us that she used to work for a dressmaker and she used to be a fashion designer and we were like, of course you were. Let's start from the beginning. Where did you grow up? So my family's actually from South Africa and we moved here when I was a baby. Um, so I grew up outside of the DC area, but my grandmother, who was a very big influence of mine, lived in New York. So we spent a lot of time in New York. So when people ask me where I grew up, I actually really feel like I grew up in many different places. And so during those summers here in New York, what were you doing related to fashion? Well, it's funny that that's how you finished the question because for so many summers I would come up and I would spend, you know, I would spend my time with my grandmother who lived here in the city and I would do like a theater program or a dance program. I went to the Martha Graham Institute um, and because of being here, um, I was, you know, sort of here already and I had these opportunities and I had this interest and passion for um, fashion for the clothing industry in general and I happened to have sort of a family friend who was very glamorous and fashionable and she was a client of Luca Luca's and she sort of took me on an outing one day and happened to be going shopping and I met Luca himself and for me at the time that was just like the most epic thing that a young designer could ever experience is walking into a store and this, the designer is there and I handed him my sketchbook and basically said give me an internship and um, you know that's how it all started. Shortly after that I was fortunate enough to intern for Polenta Schooler when they were still a relatively small brand down on Walker Street and seeing that level of detail and that level of um, uninhibited creativity just sort of catapulted me into a different level of desire to be part of this this world. And having been coming from the experience with Proenza when I was living in India, helping for work experience, and a position at Alexander McQueen opened up, I think that it had a lot to do with that, with sort of them knowing that I had come from a, an environment of that kind of challenge and that kind that kind of level of sort of authentic design process um, and you know just working at a company like Alexander McQueen in general let alone the fact that he was still alive at the time that I was fortunate enough to be part of a team that I think really made sense for me when I worked on the McHugh collection where he was still involved he would come and review uh, the, you know, the textile work that we did or the colors that we were presenting for the season or the references and um, inspiration and sketches and drapery and all of that. I was actually considering what a big grand brand that, you know, they were owned by Gucci Group at the time that Alexander McQueen was. Kind of shrinking that into this like intimate experience of of it being McHugh with a very small team and and sort of isolating and filtering all of those very huge ideas that that were where McQueen's couture collections come from and translating that into something that was really tangible to like the everyday person was another light bulb moment for me in my career and how important it is to be able to give that to people. Okay, so walk me through the process of designing a collection, including the timeline. So, you know, maybe in the beginning it was different where I was looking for like these, these inspirations and these links to create a story. Um, and, but now, you know, almost seven years down the line, it's, it's so much about my customer and about providing her with that, that perfectly elevated, perfectly rounded off wardrobe that from one season to the next, it's really about filling in those gaps. You know, what was missing last season? What's missing from her life or her lifestyle now that 
is maybe something that didn't exist a year ago. Uh, maybe she's married now. Maybe she has a different kind of job now. Maybe she's become an activist now. Maybe, you know, maybe she's traveling more. And, you know, trying to imagine how m what I create works into her world is part of like what each one of these puzzle pieces it's almost like I'm creating a wardrobe that is like a giant it's like a 2000 piece puzzle but we don't know what the picture looks like you know so I'm creating that picture from from one puzzle piece to the next by just making them fit together in a way that eventually will create this like perfect this perfect map or this perfect image and it seems today that you really have to become a lifestyle sort of brand and so how have you changed since you started the collection to today, to the ever-evolving world that is fashion? And also, as you were speaking to before, kind of turning into that lifestyle for the Kalmeyer woman. You know, I think that that's something that is really challenging brands and businesses right now. Like, I don't think that every one has to be a lifestyle brand but i think that it's important if you're creating a product or if you're starting a business that you understand the lifestyle of your consumer and that you consider that with every move that you make or any every innovation of your product um, my brand in particular i have always seen as a lifestyle brand because it is so much a part of the world that that woman lives in and is more influenced by her than she, than than that i influence her mm -hmm. um i've always said like you don't put on kalmeyer and become fabulous you don't put on kalmeyer and become a strong woman you are a strong woman and that's why you have chosen these clothes that's why these clothes are perfect for you and I think the same can be applied to so many other things that you know we touch throughout the day or throughout our lives. Okay, so when you're going into a new season, choosing the fabrics that you're gonna use, what, what does that look like and the colors? Well, now I think more than ever, um, we're not that dictated by season. Mm -hmm. And I certainly am not dictated too much by trend. So for example, if I feel like what she's missing this season is a blazer. You know, what season is it for? But can she also wear it throughout the year? Because most people are not buying a blazer just to wear from right from March until September. You know, a, a good blazer can be worn all year round. So considering weights and considering stretch or not stretch or care, you know, care is a big part of actually how I choose my fabrics. Does this have to be dry cleaned? Can it be washed? Will it change the the sort of foundation of the garment if, if it's treated in different ways? Can it travel? Can it go in a suitcase and come out looking good on the other end? Th that's how I choose fabrics and how those fabrics get applied to different garments. So how did you know it was time to start your brand? So I was living in New York at the time. I had um, graduated. I had had all these incredible work experiences and internships. I had been freelancing for some great brands, um, some like more couture, some more contemporary, um, some private label, and you know all of those were like the pieces that put the fashion industry together. You know the the. Um, TJ Maxx brands are just as relevant as the, you know, Harvey Nichols and Barney's brands. Um, but even with all of that, there was like something missing in the middle that I felt. And I think every good business comes from a need, right? It comes from a lack of something. It comes from a need to fill a space. And even as a, as a young artist, as like a young consumer in my very early 20s i felt like there was something missing in that market in that contemporary accessibility space that had that same sense of sort of international sophistication these these garments that you can wear in front of your you know your grandmother in front of your best friends with your with your 
business partner to an interview to a first date that was accessible from a price point perspective, but also from a lifestyle perspective, but that had this sense of kind of personal grandeur about it when it comes to class and sophistication and timelessness. And that's where it really started. And I had some incredible mentors. And of course, I had a very supportive family around me who I think always kind of knew like it's early, you can always keep working for other businesses. But yes, you have a point of view. You can do this. Uh, you should do this. And it was almost like I was waiting for the green light from people that I respected in order to say, you know, I'm just going to jump off this cliff and grow my wings on the way down.